All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob from Smirking Gun Reviews. We're back with another episode of The Man in the High Castle. We have season two, episode five, Duck and Cover. Uh, so, full spoilers if you haven't seen the episode. Uh, this episode has a lot of little details, a lot of ba like important details, subtle things, things that are finally kind of explained. A little bit more backstory that makes things more interesting. So, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to like, who do you pick first? So, I guess we'll go with Frank. Uh, Frank is just Frank. Uh, kind of along for the ride again with the uh, resistance. Um, he goes, he ends up uh, going to a resistance funeral for Karen. Where they essentially just, it, he becomes one of them. Um, long story short, I mean, for Frank, that's basically his arc in this, in this episode, is just, uh, learning more about what's going on, them kind of controlling it. In fact, they say, um, when he wants, uh, he says something, uh, like, Lem is talking to Gary, and he says, basically, you know, you're the only thing between him and blank. There's a missing spot there, you know. There's a missing word. There's a that that they don't. They're keeping from him. But in the essence, he goes and he becomes. He feels part of this community. So now uh, let's get to Ed. So Ed, it turns out, wasn't just let go by the Japanese authority by Inspector Kido. It didn't matter. Uh, they had already gotten to Ed. And that Ed is basically their informant, and they know about the Yakuza deal, they know about the counterfeiting, they know uh, the, about the resistance. And so they are basically just waiting on Ed's, you know, passing them information until it's useful to them. So Ed is, <laughs> has been broken, and uh, you know, hey. This doesn't bode well for our antique dealer, and it bodes even less well for Frank. Um, now, let's see, who else do we got here? Uh, well, Inspector Keto, he's got his own things going too. So he knows that Juliana Crane has been uh, given asylum by the Reich, and he wants her extradited. Doesn't think it's going to be that big a deal until he finds out that he's that Obergruppen Fear Smith is the one sponsoring her asylum. So it makes things a little bit more difficult. So difficult that Keto ends up going all the way to New York um, to speak to F Smith himself. And this, um, where they start talking about the man in the high castle. Um, but in this instance, we get a little bit of extra knowledge about Smith himself, and that is they haven't already said it. I believe this is the first instance they're me mentioning it, that Smith was American military before the Reich took over. He wasn't always a Nazi. He wasn't always a traitor. Uh, at one point, he fought, and him and Keto were at the same battle on opposite sides, but it, it'll be interesting to find out, you know, how Smith... I mean, it's, I guess it's not that hard to figure out how, uh, how Smith is uh, on the Nazis now, but why? Like, why would he allow himself to be a Nazi? So uh, that's something I can't remember if they say in season two or not. But it's pretty interesting that, yep, Smith is from the good old U.S. of A. He was American military, and now he's one of the most considered to be the most evil Nazi around. Uh, right, uh, I almost forget about the beginning, where Juliana meets Greg Dixon. Who is part of the resistance, Trudy's father, uh, and uh, played by Tate Donovan, who's been around for a long time. I remember the first thing I saw him in was Space Camp, long ass time ago. <laughs> um, and basically, how he's kind of keeping her alive, uh, and the resistance is allowing her to be alive so that she can end up infiltrating. Smith's family and taking out Smith. It sounds like they wanted, wanted to take him out. Here's the thing. Juliana knows they're working her. 
So I guess Juliana isn't that dumb uh, because she realizes that they're working an angle. She's just a pawn being moved around the board, but at least now she knows she is. Uh, they know that she knows that they're watching her. Um, and like it was great when she was dusting near the camera. That's when Smith calls about having dinner. Um, and in this, then we go to Joe, who again is almost leaving Germany. <laughs> He's been trying to leave for, like, how many episodes? Now his dad comes and stops him and takes him to this place where, uh, basically, the people were trying to make, like, perfect little Hitler babies. They were using his genes to make Hitler babies. So that if something were to happen, there would be lineage. Uh, and Joseph's now, you know, I guess he's not really his father. More like his engineer. Um, that he, his mother stole him and took him to America and all this other jazz. Now, how much of this I believe, how much of this is proven? Right now, it's just words being said by Nazis. Now, there's no... Uh, I'd say they have no reason to lie, but all they do is lie. There's so much untrue that even when you hear a truth, you have to question it. So is he... Like Hitler's kid, genetically, it's possible. It's more than likely. But again, I have to kind of distrust it because of the source. But Joe seems to kind of buy it because, well, Joe just seems to buy everything, doesn't he? Even if he is a little, like, frustrated, but it's like it somehow makes sense to him. So when he calls Smith and tells him it's over between the two of them, and, uh, you know, you knew about this and all, la, 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 you know, more. <laughs> Smith isn't, you know, Smith's got his own problems, his own stuff to deal with, like his son, but still, you know, Smith, you know, saying he's got it under control, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, and is that all? Is that, oh, and we, we got to get to Tagomi. So, <laughs> Tagomi is testing how far he can go in the other reality. Um, He's got some concentrating, meditating going on because uh, he sees his wife, or what was, you know, in this reality, his wife is alive. And except she's divorcing him. He doesn't know why. And every interaction he has with these people, you know, it's a, it's a strange thing because he doesn't really know these people, these, these version of his family. Um, I guess maybe he thought things had, you know, wouldn't change, but apparently he's a big old drunk who likes to disappear. Uh, and uh, now whether that that's, you know, true or some sort of cover, you know, I don't know. But he goes to a history, you know, a bookstore, reads about his history and sees what happened to Japan and Germany during the war. Um, and then he ends up back at the house where he meets his son who is kind of disrespectful to him, like in his mind, is disrespectful. And this is where we get from season one's kind of connection to Juliana. That there's always been something there between them. They didn't, they don't really understand it. But now here we have that Juliana is his son's wife in this reality. And she has a kid. And so that whole kind of weird deja vu -y thing is finally explained here. So we had a lot of little, little big things happen. Nothing, you know, there was no like action scenes and no deaths or anything really. It just lots of interesting details are finally brought up. I'm glad it's finally here. Like now we can start really getting into some really cool, you know, cool storylines. So I believe that's about it. I kind of just hit the, the major points. I mean, that's a lot. Uh, I don't have any major gripes about this episode. Uh, it's just pretty solid straight through. I mean, the resistance sucks. Oh, Abinson. Almost goddamn forgot. That's the other thing. Abinson torches his place with all the films. Takes one stack with. Must be important. Rest is up here, he says. A little spring cleaning. Flick of the cigarette. And everything's up in flames. Now, I don't know if Abinson's the man in the high castle uh, or not. It kind of seems to me like he's the uh, 
what would you call him, like the keeper of the films. But, uh, I mean, they're kind of painting him to be the man in the high castle, or at least I think that we're meant to think he is, but I don't think he is. So, anyway, this is Rob for Smirking Gun Reviews, saying if you like this video, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz, blah, blah, blah. Later on tonight, we've got the Talking Dead uh, special review. I'm going to go over the stuff that's uh, in that. And we got Preacher, we got Sharp Objects, and tomorrow, on Monday, we have Better Call Saul. I am planning to be very in-depth on Better Call Saul. That's one of my favorite shows. Uh, probably by the time it's over, it's going to be all, of all time, one of my top shows. So, anyway, we will see you on the next video. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and that's it. Bye.